everyone, welcome to today's Facebook Live at Flying Miata. My name is Jeremy, and today we are going to talk about bypass valves slash blow-off valves. What are they? Um, why would you want one versus the other? What are implications of how they might be set up for your specific car? Uh, so <clears throat> we're gonna go through some various things and then take some questions later. As always, if you have questions, you know, feel free to leave them in the comments. We'll be watching that as we go along to see if anything else pops up. This is a fairly simple topic and yet it's a pretty important topic. So um, let's dive right in. <clears throat> Here we have a bypass valve, also known as a blow off valve. And the distinction is really in how it's set up and how it's implemented. Um, what it is, is it's a body where you have a piston inside, a nipple on top and the nipple and then step back here, this is going to be applied to a turbocharged application. Because in a turbocharged application, your turbocharger makes positive pressure in your you know, stream of airflow through the intercooler pipes, the intercooler into the throttle body, and then eventually on into the engine where you know, the combustion occurs. <clears throat> However, on gasoline cars, we have a throttle body. And the throttle body is a plate. When you release the throttle pedal, the throttle body plate closes, and yet the turbocharger has been making positive pressure while it was open. Now, that air needs somewhere to go, and air, just you know, like any fluid, is gonna follow the path of least resistance. So, if you didn't have one of these valves in your system, what's gonna happen is that air is gonna hit that closed throttle plate, it's gonna turn around, it's gonna run backwards through the system, and the only place it has to go is backwards out through the turbocharger. When you have a turbocharger and the wheel is spinning, you know, tens of, I don't know, 100,000, but lots and lots and lots of RPM, depending on your load and your engine speed. If you try to all of a sudden take air and go backwards out of it, bad things are eventually gonna happen. Um, <clears throat> it's not something that's gonna damage the turbocharger immediately, but it's going to create wear and over time, it is going to damage the turbocharger and it's not good. So what was developed for these systems are these valves. And basically, under normal operating conditions, the piston that's inside this valve is closed so that the pressurized air can make its way into the engine. However, when you shift, when you close that throttle, <clears throat> you've got that buildup of positive pressure on the forward side of the plate. However, after the plate, you've got a closed plate but you have pistons that are still, you know, boinging up and down. And what that's doing is that's creating a vacuum in your intake manifold. And if you have a boost gauge, you know, you'll see that. When you lift, your boost gauge goes to full vacuum, like, you know, 20 inches or so, depending on your setup and your elevation. So what you would do is you take a vacuum hose, you run it over to this, and inside here, there it's, it's a spring and it's sealed around the piston. So when the intake manifold pulls that vacuum, it pulls the piston up, which creates a, wear, a place for that pressurized air to leave the system. So that way it's venting off that pressurized air instead of making that pressurized air go backwards out the turbo and you know, big picture long-term, you know, damaging the turbo. So that's the basic function of the valve. <clears throat> it can be set up in a couple different ways. It can be set up in a recirculated fashion um, where <clears throat> it could be called a bypass valve or it could be set up in a vent to atmosphere fashion where uh, you know, you've know you say you've got a filter on here and it could be called a blow off valve. And, and it's kind of just semantics. Uh, but the moral of the story is if you have it set up as a blow off valve, so you have a filter on here and when that air is released, it just goes off into the atmosphere. Um, there's certain times you can do that, certain times you shouldn't do that. How we generally set our sets up, because all of our kits are 50 state legal, you know, we're running with stock ECUs. Uh, we have to keep things emissions compliant, which is really the smarter way to go. It would be set up as a bypass valve. And so this would plumb back into the intercooler piping um, just before the turbo. So intercooler, the, the, the charge piping, but before the turbo where there's not pressurized air. And so, you know, by doing that, it's keeping that air within the system. Um, so that's kind of the different styles of setting it up. And so you might ask yourself, well, why would you set it up one way versus the other? Um, and not to get too deep into the weeds, but in the big picture, anytime you're running a setup that has a stock ECU where you're using 
an airflow meter or a mass airflow sensor, depending on the setup of your car. You know, the, the NA6s or airflow meters, NBs all use a mass airflow sensor. <clears throat> How these things work is all air that has passed through this sensor is now metered and in a sealed system. The computer knows that air is there. So in order for the computer to be able to do its job and correctly fuel and time the engine, that air has to stay in the system until it's ultimately you know, gone through the, the combustion cycle and, and burnt. <clears throat> so anytime you're running a stock computer with these mass airflow sensors, you, you cannot just take that mass of air and vent it off to the atmosphere because now the computer thinks there's air in the system that's not in the system and it's going to incorrectly fuel and time the engine and it's just gonna cause problems. Not only emissions problems, but it's probably also gonna cause drivability problems when you do that. So in these types of systems, you always want to recirculate this and plumb this air back in. So you can see over here on the car, <clears throat> we've got our, our bypass valve here. The hose goes over on our stage one systems and it comes back into the system before the turbo, but after the mass airflow sensor. So <clears throat> that's keeping it sealed, it's still maintained in the system. That air can get chewed up and go back through the turbo and ultimately get used without you know, having a metering problem because you've released that air into the atmosphere. Now that is gonna be a little bit quieter, as some of you have asked, than if you have this set up in a, a blow off valve scenario. There are times when it's okay to do that. Um, generally speaking, if you're running a system uh, that's not a 50 state legal system, not a street legal system where you have a standalone ECU, pretty much all standalone ECUs out there are going to use a MAP sensor, and that's manifold absolute pressure. So they don't have the air metering system on the intake like the factory ECUs do. They simply measure the pressure in the manifold. And when you're doing that, the air coming into the system and leaving the system doesn't really matter. All it cares about is the pressure in the manifold at any given time. So if you blow off air pre-throttle body back out into atmosphere, it's not gonna care. So long story short, if you're running a standalone ECU, you can set it up either way safely. If you're running a stock ECU with a piggyback system or a reflash system or anything where you have metered air where the bypass valve and all of these things are after that airflow meter, everything must stay in the system and it must retain you know, that, that, that sealed air mass, if that makes sense. Uh, as far as performance of each, performance-wise, it doesn't really matter with one little asterisk. Uh, and the one little asterisk is you have to be careful about how, if you're going to recirculate, how the recirculation is plumbed. And because there's generally, with most cars, a fairly short space between the turbocharger's compressor and the, uh, the mass airflow sensor, you're generally better off where having that recirculation stream, you know, because think of like a Venturi effect and how air just kind of, you know, follows that, um, that travel path, having it pointed back towards the compressor, because then it's just kind of kind of maintain a smooth flow. It's going to blow back towards the compressor, kind of help keep it spinning, which it's super, super nitpicking as far as if there's a performance benefit there, um, but maybe. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have that air mass pointed back towards uh, the mass airflow sensor upstream because you don't want to be backwashing air over the mass airflow sensor. That will create drivability problems because it's really going to confuse the, the mass airflow sensor. Um, so how you recirculate that does have to do with performance just in that you can really screw up your performance if you're backflowing that mass airflow sensor and all of a sudden the computer is getting incorrect readings of the airflow coming into the engine because it's not going to be able to fuel and time things correctly. So, <clears throat> and as far as calibration, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't really matter. The, the, the job that this valve does is very important, but it's also really simple, you know, so it's, you, you don't need to overthink it. <clears throat> it's important to have a good quality valve like these turbo smart valves we have that are sealed. Um, and, you know, to keep the filter on it or to keep it recirculated, to keep it clean. Uh, because you don't want these things leaking air when they shouldn't. Um, once again, on a, uh, a mass airflow type of a setup, uh, it's important to have these things be sealed when the piston is down because you don't want any air coming in and, and no, screwing up the metering. And um, you also don't want this piston 
to have an opportunity to be open when you're under load because then that's going to be flowing off some of your manifold pressure, flowing off some of your boost. Uh, not super common because how these are gonna be set up is you're gonna have your manifold pressure here on the vacuum hose. You're gonna have your <clears throat> intercooler pipe pressure here on the bottom of the piston. And so you're gonna have equal pressure on the top and the bottom of the piston at all uh, under any type of a load scenario. And that means the thing that's keeping the piston closed is simply the pressure of the spring. So unless you have you know, a spring that's just way, way too light and it's just kind of getting beat up by, you know, air pulses coming in the bottom. It generally shouldn't be an issue. Um, so, yeah. As far as tuning these things, there really isn't any tuning involved. Some of these do have different spring pressures you can put in here or have like an adjustable preload on the spring. If you're using a standalone system with a MAP sensor, if you have your spring really light and under vacuum, it's actually pulling the piston up allowing some air to go around. It's not gonna matter because it's a MAP sensor type system. Um, <clears throat> in a mass airflow type system, uh, I, I would still wanna have enough spring pressure on here, even though everything is in a sealed metered system. I still like the idea of having enough spring pressure on this, basically so at idle, when you're pulling just full normal vacuum sitting at idle, that the piston really isn't you know, pulling open much, if at all. So. Not really much tuning to be done on these. They're really pretty simple. Um, so <clears throat> let's see. That really covers pretty much everything about these. We can see if any questions have come through. There's one other thing that I wanted to point out before we go on. Over the years, uh, I, I did take lots and lots of phone calls over the years where uh, customers weren't quite up to speed on the difference between a wastegate and a blow-off valve and kind of got them interchanged in their minds and so we'd have to kind of explain what's going on. And so real quick, I just want to make sure that you understand what the difference is in the function of a wastegate versus a blow-off valve because they both are attached to turbo systems, uh, but they have a very different job. So if we look over here, you know, we've been talking about you know, the bypass slash blow-off valves this whole time. They're on the intercooler piping system. They're on the charge side, whereas the wastegate and the wastegate actuator are on the hot side of the turbo. They're on the exhaust system. And the wastegate and the wastegate actuator, that's what's controlling the outflow of gas. And it's, it's metering that outflow of gas in a way that controls your level of positive pressure on the cold side. Whereas the blow-off valve is at the end of the cold side charge and it's releasing that extra air when the throttle plate closes. So it has somewhere to go. So they're very, very different systems, both turbo involved, but they, they do different things. So it's important to kind of keep the, the jobs of those things separate and distinct. So um, yeah, it's <clears throat> simple things that kind of covers the main talking points. Uh, let's see at this time, is there, do you guys hear any questions in the comments that we can cover? Uh, all right, well, it sounds like we have one. So what do we got? Okay, so there's a question about bypass valves in relation to superchargers. <clears throat> on supercharger systems, the bypass valve is going to be kind of, um, you know, hard mounted in the casting usually. And it's a similar scenario where <clears throat> basically it's providing a bypass around the supercharger lobes. So when you're in vacuum, that thing is open and it's giving an opportunity for air to move through the path into the engine, but move around the supercharger lobes so that it can still have enough going on, you know, when you're under low load levels, um, you know, because the supercharger lobes are, there's not, you can't, you can't squeak by them, you know, they're, all, they're very, very tight fit so that they can create that positive pressure as they spin. Um, so there is one there, excuse me, but it's, it's, it's just to create that bypass valve around. It doesn't necessarily, um, blow off in the same way that a turbo blow off valve does when you when you shut. I mean, it opens and it kind of lets the air go somewhere. So yeah, it's kind of the same, but it's also kind of different, I guess. Uh, Mike? You might specify between positive displacement and centrifugal blowers or things like that. The dark positive displacement. Yeah, and Mike's pointing out, because I'm talking about the, the positive displacement supercharger, the traditional supercharger. Um, <clears throat> The, the centrifugal style superchargers, it's basically, it's a com cold side compressor like a turbo. So a functional, uh, the, the functionality of it on the cold side is gonna be the same as a turbo. Uh, it's just, you know, that's, so that doesn't really have any difference. So, all uh, right, any other questions come through?
Okay. Um, well, you know, once again, thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us uh, here at Flying Miata talking about some technical things. Uh, if you like this video, you know, feel free to, to hit the like button and let us know if you have any comments down below and we will check those out. And if, uh, if there's anything in there we can address, we'll be happy to check that out for you. Also remember, if you have any questions in the future, you can always reach out to our awesome customer service team and uh, we'll do our best to answer any questions and also just do everything we can to you know, help you have the most fun that you can in the driver's seat of your Miata. So once again, my name is Jeremy. Uh, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Oh,